Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. In today's video, we will take a look at the button to pixel or input delay of H1C1 King of the Kill. Now, how do I measure the responsiveness of a game? For that, I use a high-speed camera, a gaming monitor and a mouse which has a LED connected directly to its left mouse button, which will turn on when I press it. Inside of the game, I map the move left action to the left mouse button, so that my character will move to the left when I press it. So for every test case, I repeat this 20 times. And to get the delay results, I have to review the recorded high-speed footage, where I look for the frame where the LED lights up, and then I count the frames until the monitor shows me the action triggered by that input. This then allows me to calculate the delay between the button and the pixel. So to find out what the input delay is affected by, we first need to get a baseline to which we can then compare the results from the other tests to. So with the low graphic preset, a resolution of 1080p, 100% render quality, reduced lag turned on, vSync turned off and a display refresh rate of 144Hz, the game runs at about 210fps on my system. Under these conditions, I then measured an average button to pixel delay of 59.44 milliseconds, which is very high when compared to other games like Overwatch, which has a button to pixel delay of about 15 milliseconds under similar conditions. When I then just disabled the reduce lag option, then this did not have an impact on the button to pixel delay. However, it is possible that this might affect the mouse movement delay, so that is something that needs to be considered. In the next test, I then lowered the render quality setting to 50%, which, according to many forum topics, should result in an input lag decrease. However, the delay decrease that I measured was inside the margin of error, and the same is true for the next test where I lowered the resolution. So, when your frame rate already exceeds your display's refresh rate, then you will most likely not get a further delay decrease by lowering the render quality or the render resolution. However, when your frame rate is below the display's refresh rate, like when you play at 50 FPS on a 60Hz display, then lowering the render quality or the resolution can further decrease the input delay if this also results in a frame rate increase, because the input delay highly depends on how many frames per second your system is able to render. In the next test, I then enabled VSync, which results in a noticeable delay increase at 144Hz while at 60Hz the delay increase is massive, which is why I should stay away from VSync in first-person shooters or other fast-paced games. So in my previous videos, I always said that when a game comes with a built-in FPS limiter, then you should always prefer that over third-party tools as the built-in limiters in games like Overwatch, Battlefield and Counter-Strike offer lower delays. The FPS limiter that is built into H1C1 King of the Kill is sadly not exposed inside of the options menu. However, when you open the clientconfig.ini file, then you just have to change the maximum FPS value from its default 250 to whatever you want your frame rate cap to be. So when I set that to 144, then I measured an average button to pixel delay of 63.56 milliseconds. That's just 4 milliseconds more than what I measured at 210 FPS, which means that the additional delay decrease that you get from running this game at a frame rate much higher than the display's refresh rate is not very big. When I then used the third-party tool RTSS, to which you can find the link in the description down below, then the average delay was slightly decreased. However, it was still inside the margin of error, so that at 144 FPS, it seems that the built-in FPS limiter and RTSS produced the same results in King of the Kill. While in other games like Overwatch, Battlefield and CSGO, RTSS usually increases the delay by at least one frame. Where things start to look a bit different then is when I set the FPS limit to 60 because then the average delay is about 11 milliseconds lower with RTSS compared to the test where I used the built-in FPS limiter. This means that while you should definitely prefer the built-in FPS limiters in Overwatch, Battlefield and CSGO, you might want to consider to avoid the built-in FPS limiter in King of the Kill and use RTSS instead, especially when you limit your frame rate to less than 144. Then I tested the input delay at different graphic settings. So with the low preset I got about 210 FPS and measured an average delay of 59.44 milliseconds. With the medium preset my frame rate decreased to about 200 FPS and the average delay increased to 64.06 milliseconds, which is about the same delay that I measured when I limited the frame rate to 144 while the game was running at the low preset. 
With the high preset for the graphic settings, my frame rate decreased to 180, while the delay increase compared to the medium preset is inside the margin of error. But when I then selected the ultra preset, which didn't really change the frame rate, the delay increased by about 13 milliseconds compared to the high and medium preset. It's also about 16 milliseconds higher compared to what I measured when I used RTSS to cap the frame rate at 144 FPS while running the game at the low graphic preset. This is the first time that I have seen a graphic preset directly affect the input delay. I did a similar test in Overwatch a few months ago and there are none of the graphic settings nor presets affected the delay as long as these did not massively reduce the frame rate. So what can we learn from this? First of all, each of these tests has a sample size of 20 and I also repeated them three times to make sure that the results are the same across multiple runs and different servers. I felt that this was necessary to make sure that especially the results from the built-in FPS limiter as well as the results from the different graphic settings are accurate. I also did a few tests where I based the input delay measurement on gunfire and that produced very similar results which means that the values that you see here are not exclusive to the player movement. Now, with that out of the way, the input delay is mostly affected by the frame rate, where a higher frame rate or more FPS means less delay. However, a frame rate much higher than your display's so refresh rate will only result in a very small delay decrease in King of the Kill, so you don't gain much by that, which is why you might want to limit your frame rate to lower the temperature of your GPU and the noise produced by its cooling solution. Speaking of frame rate limiters, you should use the RiverTuner statistic server instead of the built-in FPS limiter, as the built-in FPS limiter increases your delay, especially at frame rates below 144. Also, to maximize the responsiveness of H1C1 King of the Kill, you should stay away from VSync and the Ultra preset for the graphic options, as these do increase the button to pixel delay. So, when we look at the quite high delay that I measured in my baseline test and the delay increase caused by the FPS limiter, then there is surely room for improvement where the developers can further optimize the engine to make the game more responsive. I'd also wish that they could add settings to the options menu where you can dial in the specific FPS limit that you want to use, as well as an option where you can choose between exclusive full screen, windowed and borderless windowed mode as quality of life improvements. And that's all that I've got for you today. So if you like this kind of niche content where I take a look at the inner workings of video games and show you how these affect your experience, then you can help me to cover the cost of this channel by supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Also, if you want to stay up to date on what I'm currently working on, then you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook. The links are also in the description of this video. And if you don't want to miss the next one, then you might want to subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon below this video to receive a notification when I upload the next one. So if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.